Hi everybody, how are you getting on? Thanks very much for clicking on my video again. Um, I was going to do a video today about cup and cone bearings. Um, there's a couple of reasons I'm doing the video, but one of them, I suppose, is um, there seems to be there seems to be a lot of videos online of cup and cone bearings, but I find that they're a little bit misleading. Now, this this, this I'm not throwing shade on anybody else. I love all those channels. You're probably following the same people like. Monkey Shred and RJ the Bike Guy and loads of other fellas like that that do great videos of um, restorations, bicycle restorations, even some of the ones from India are amazing. But um, what they all seem to do, right, is that they, they service a cup and cone bearing system and they, when, they're, when they're setting the preload, so when they're tightening it up for a finish, they always get it in one go. And um, honestly, I, I, I suppose in my time I've done, I've done I probably at this stage I've done hundreds of hundreds of wheels more maybe I don't know but I have never I've never got it right in the first go so it always takes me a couple of goes and I think if I remember rightly that the first time that I did cup and cone bearings I found it very frustrating because some of the guys that will show you online what they'll do is they'll they'll replace the bearings they'll do the grease make a lovely job of it they'll tighten it up and as they're tightening it up then they'll actually set it in between their knees and they'll spin it in front of you know no look I get it they want to make the video pleasing and they want to make it look good and they want you know the viewers to come back and they want to make it all look very professional that's kind of not me right what I want to do is I want to show you like what you're going to have to do if you're going to adjust your cup and cone bearings now I know people will say like why, why would you why would you go at them like um, what I find is like I do up a lot of old bikes the likes of um, bikes that you have in, in your shade or bikes that, that, that you'll find out in the garage that the young fellow is using and he doesn't use it anymore. And when you take it out and you start making your way around the bike to look at what's wrong, if you're confident enough to work on a bike, one of the most important things to look at is the bearings, I think, anyway, you know. So if you catch the wheel, I'll, 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 I'll put in a clip here now where I, I the, the wheel that I'm going to do. So if you look in here, in where the bearings are, you can see the movement, look. you see it? It's easier if you look up here at the brake pads. I'll try and focus in for you. You see the rocking? So the front wheel is wobbling mad on this bike. Catch the wheel with your thumb and forefinger and shake it. If there's very little movement, don't worry about it. But sometimes you'll feel it knocking. Now what that means is that the cup and cone bearings have loosened and um, water is getting in, it's flushing out the grease and it's not going to last long, you know, you're going you're gonna to destroy the bearings. Um, now, look, I'm not going to get into, like, um, you know, you can go out and buy new bearings, you can do all that, but if you, if you want to do this yourself, um, it, it, it's, actually, it's actually a very satisfying job if, if, if you do it. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you how I do it. Now, look. I have a voice. Um, I wouldn't do this without a voice. Again, this goes back to me watching videos of people and they just do it on their, on their lap, on their knees, you know, and then they spin the wheel and they're like, they have it perfect every go. I don't know how they can do that, right? I have seen people do it where they've got like a basic voice grip, so like, like this kind of a guy here, you know? I, I don't know what they're called all over the world. But then you can put that down on the desk, clamp it up and put a couple of screws into it so it's solid. But what you need to do is you need the wheel to be sitting in front of you like this so that you can make those minor adjustments what you're doing is you're squeezing the cone down onto the bearings and you're tightening a lock nut and I don't know how people can do that between their knees no I can look if I have to I can do it but um definitely it's going to be easier with a voice if you haven't got a voice I've seen people do it where they get a plank of wood and they, they cut out the size of the bolt and they look there's loads of videos on like but I have a vice, so I'm going to show you how to do it with a vice. I have the wheel clamped into the vice. Um, I'm lucky, look, I have, um, I'll just take you back a little bit. I just have a little bench vice here. A guy bought it in um, Aldi, I think they're like 40 euro. But I, I like, look, I can justify it because I use it all the time, okay? So what you need to do this, um, I'm going to take you through the process. Um, just to, I, I just want to kind of show you the truth behind changing these bearings. It's They do make it look really pretty. I, I, I'm even convinced that in some of the videos online they dismantle all of this first 
and then they they show you they show you just so they they don't run into problems and i get it they want to have a nice video i don't care about having a nice video i just want to show you what you will probably have to do if you're doing if you do this right so this is a cone spanner okay so what they are is you this is a normal spanner and a cone spanner you can see the difference in the thickness cone spanners are designed to go in under the lock nut okay you won't be able to do this without a cone spanner and um, these are cheap oh i mean i got these off aliexpress they were like 250 each and you'll always find you're using the same size. So I bought, um, I think this one is a 14. I bought 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. And I had them hanging up there. So I'm never stuck. Um, this is a real pain without one of these. In fact, some wheels you can't. So, cone spanner goes under the lock nut here like this. So I'll just find it there now, one minute. Now, I have the, I have the cone spanner cut. Now, you're never actually putting any pressure on the cone spanner. You're just holding it so that you can open the top nut here. Which is... A seventeen. Okay, and that's it. So that cracked open. Now that now, as I said, I'm showing you as 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 I got the wheel off the bike, so I don't have this pre-prepared. They're normally not that tight. All you're doing is you're locking one onto the other. But look, I'll show you close up in a minute. Now, if you like, and what I do, right? is when I take take a wheel apart, it's different for a back wheel on a bike. A back wheel on a bike has more spacers, so I always lay them down on the binge in the order that I took them off so that there's no confusion afterwards, okay? For example, um, if you look at this nut, it's got, it's, got a rough, it's got a rough side and a smooth side. The rough side faces out because the rough side is going to be clamping against the dropout on your bike. But look, take them off as you, as, as, and put them, put them aside in order that you remove them and then you can just lift them back on again okay so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to remove the cone it's called right so it's called cup and cone and i'll show you why now in a minute so you can see now why i cleaned the treads before i started this if i hadn't cleaned the treads before i started this i'd be um i'd be messing here now with um it just would lock up it, it, it just it just it, it the treads get filled it's difficult to get off so it's just a little tip, it's just something I'm doing. Okay, now. So I'll give this a clean now, we'll have a closer look. Um, i just hold that. Okay. i just hold it in this little thing here so that you can see it better. Okay. That's what the cone looks like. There. Okay. So you can see that it actually treads into the bearings, all right? So that treads down into the bearings. I know it's gone out of focus. So what you gotta do is make sure this isn't damaged, that it doesn't have a lot of scoring. Um, this one looks pretty nice. Um, if it had any damage on, the, you'll see when you clean them, when you wipe them with a the cloth, you'll see where the bearings are running. There. So you'll see that little silver edge all around that the bearings are running on and you just want to make sure that's nice and clean and smooth that there isn't any marks or divots or anything in it but this one is fine now this 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 bike actually comes with a little dust cap here so i'm going to put that aside again in the order that it came out and it comes with another little uh, bearing cover this guy, so I'm going to put that aside. And now I'll take you in to see the bearings. So now we're into the bearings, okay? And you can see them inside. You can see that there's, if I don't tighten the cone down properly on top of them, you get that wobbling. So I'll bring you back in a minute when I've everything cleaned up. I'm after cleaning all of this here, look. I just used a bit of WD-40, gave it, cleaned it up. I'm going to leave it in place, there's no need to dismantle anything here. And I've repacked the bearings, you can see them in there, look. I hope it's focusing okay for you. So all I've done is i put the bearings in, put in new grease. Now, if you go to um, your bike shop and you bring one of those bearings, well you should count them, like this one had 18 bearings. But bring the bearings to your bike shop, um, ask them for new bearings, they'll sell you a tiny little tube of grease as well. So that you can, uh, it's like... Um, 
they call it like um, a service kit but you can get those bearings you can get that grease I have loads of grease and I have the bearings so I'm actually going to reuse these bearings they look good to me not that I I mean I don't know they, they, I'll, I'll know when I start adjusting it whether they're okay or not okay so all I'm going to do now is lower it on sorry now if I'm rushing through the video a little bit but um, I kind of think that you know, if you want to learn how to change cup and cone bearings, there's definitely better videos than me. I'm just going to show you the adjustment bit. I thought I'd show the whole procedure. I'm putting everything back together as it came apart. So I have the little dust cover, the little cone. And I'm going to bring that cone down just till it's just hang tight. Okay. Now, I didn't dismantle the other side of this so I know that when I put this back together everything will be in the right place if you take out an axle and you dismantle it okay you have to be very careful because your spacing could be wrong afterwards okay so um, yeah I didn't probably explain that too well so that's that's pretty tight okay it's it's, it's pretty good um, and what I'm going to do now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put in the lock nut and I'm going to try and lock it all down. Okay. So this is my lock nut here. It has a, it has the I'm keeping this side with the it's like a gnarled and gnarled edge. I'm keeping that up. And this is the bit that I find um, that they don't really show you. <laughs> and uh, it's kind of the reason I'm doing the video. Look, if it helps one person, if one person is attempting this someday and they come across my video and they think Jesus you know what I watched that Fred, that Fred Shady fella and, um, and uh, he actually made a lot of sense I couldn't get mine to work ok so what you'll see them doing in the other videos is they'll do this now they'll, they'll put this here on the coal right they'll, I'll just get it to hold the coal then they'll get the lock nut and they'll adjust it to whatever they want whatever they'll go they'll try it they'll tighten the lock nut a little bit like I'm doing and then they'll go and they'll shake the wheel and spin it and tell you, oh, it's, it's perfect. There you go. Look, it's spinning beautifully. But it isn't, right? Because as soon as I take this out of the vice and I hold it between my knees and I try and spin it, this will either be way too tight or there'll be loads of movement in it. Okay? So there's absolutely that. I don't know if you can hear that now. That's not right. That's that's way too tight. There's way too much movement there. Or not sorry, there's it's way too tight on those bearings. Hear that? You couldn't ride it like that. So what I have to do is I have to put it back in. I'll try and bring you in a bit closer now and over the top and show you how I do it, okay? Maybe that's a bit better. So yeah, so it's, look, sorry for repeating myself, but a lot of times this is what they'll do. They'll get a rag, they'll give it a wipe, and they'll tell you that's it done. But I can guarantee you they're going to do exactly what I do. That's, it looks lovely there, but you saw when I took it out. It's, it's not. It's not even nearly right. So what you have to do is get the, get the cone spanner. I'll find the cone there. So what I'm doing is I'm marking this with a spoke. I'm lining this up along here with a spoke. Right? So it's in line here. I'm just picking a spot. Just pick wherever you want. So I'm going to line it up with a spoke, right? So that's clamped. I'm going to loosen this. Now I know it was too tight, so I'm going to back it off. I'm going to back it off by one spoke. Can you see what I've done? So it was over here, the cone. I'm just moving it over one spoke. You don't need to move with a spoke. You just need to set yourself something. Tighten it. Now I'm going to tighten it down good and tight. Okay. And now I have to take it back out and I have to spin it again. So I'm going to take you look back a little bit. Take it out. Now, that's still too tight. I can feel it. So that feels notchy to me. Even though, look, it's rotating and spinning. But that's way too tight. I can feel it, right? So that's not, that should be butter smooth. Back in again. Bring you over. Same procedure. Pick a spot right here. Okay. 
Now look, it was over, it depends where you clamp it in the vise. So I'm going to loosen this, loosen off the lock nut, and now if you can see here, I'm on this spoke, I'm going to move it another spoke. So every time I move it in that direction, I'm loosening the cone. Tighten it down again. And now I'm going to try it. Can you hear that? Still too tight. So we go again. Now this is this is three adjustments now from when some people in other videos will lead you to believe that they adjusted it and uh, they did it in one go and it was absolutely fine and some other people will do it between their knees. I have no idea how you could do it between your knees but anyway. So I'm going to loosen it again. I'll, I'll, I'll bend the corner around this side. No, I, I, I'll leave it here. I'll try and I'll just adjust where I'm clamping it from so that you can see it. Right? Okay. Loosen the lock nut. Now, you can see here, I'm on this spoke. I'm going to loosen it to this spoke. Every time I move it, a spoke, right? A spoke is just a gate. I'm, look, I, I kind of don't, the spokes are only just so that you can see what I'm doing. But you can see that every time I put this cone spanner in, I'm moving it clock, anti clockwise tightening the lock nut and that's loosening it. If I find then it's too loose, I'll repeat the process, but I'll go half a distance, half a distance, half a distance. But that's why you need to have it clamped into a voice. You can't do this between your knees. If you try and do this between your knees, you're actually, the whole axle is moving. So you're never getting the axle to stay in place. I hope that's making sense. It makes sense if, if you've ever tried to do a cup and go on bearings before. Now that feels really good. Okay. There you go. Now I'm still not happy with it because now, no, I'm not. It's pretty good, I, pretty good. But what I'm going to do with this now is I'm going to clamp it into the bike, and I'm going to spin it a, a good few times, and uh, just to make sure I'm happy with it. Because so that's it, everybody. Um, I hope I didn't come across as um, you know, like I was throwing shade at, at any of these other channels. Um, throwing shade, yeah. So like in Ireland, we say throwing shade. It just means um, it means being disrespectful that I was like, uh, you know, commenting on 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 what they didn't do that I do or I don't know. Look, it's tro it's it's we say it's throwing shade. So anyway, no, no, that 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 was not my intention. Um, I wanted to do the video because I I I have I've got fifty seven subscribers. I don't know where where you're coming out of or why. But anyway, I have fifty seven subscribers, and I was thinking I'd do another video, um, because I enjoyed doing them. And um, I was kind of, I'm kind of stuck for ideas on what videos we should do because there are some amazing channels out there doing videos, uh, cycling and the stuff I love to do, which is repairing these old bikes. So I thought, look, cup and cone bearings is one that always was a bit of a bugbear. I always kind of thought, I'd love to see one of the channels that I really like um, do a video where they explain explain to people that no, you won't get it right in the first go. You're probably going to struggle a lot to do it between your knees, like I see on some of the other channels. I see on. Um, you know, they, they kind of just do it on the ground and like they get it right the first go and it, it always kind of bugged me. But look, that that's not me. There's no there's no frills here. This is just me inside my shed doing videos. And um, maybe, maybe, maybe somebody will come across my video someday and they, they'll think, yeah, look, I, you know, it's normal for it not to be right on the first go. It's normal that I, I replaced all the bearings and I tightened up all the washers and it's still wobbling. I just need to keep at it, keep at it, keep at it, make these minor adjustments until you get it right. So anyway, yeah, that's that's it. So thanks to everybody that, that is after watching my videos. Um, thanks to everybody that's after subscribing. And um, yeah, I hope you don't think I'm throwing shade. So see you later. Thanks very much.